Hello and welcome to the next edition of Gurta Meetups. My name is Ksenia Dole. I'm Technology Partners Community Manager at Gurta. Uh, for those of you who just started to watch Gurta TV, um, during these meetups we gather uh, telematics in, uh, experts from uh, different parts of the world, from different industries, uh, and here we discuss the real uh, cases uh, of um, Im the implementation of IoT and telematic solutions. Uh, and here we answer the most burning questions. Uh, check the links in the description of this video in order to find our schedule and, uh, of course, the records of all the previous meetups. Uh, and also I would like to say that uh, these meetups, they are open events and we invite our audience to uh, share their opinions uh, in the chat during meetup uh, and continue this uh, topic further uh, in the Gritam forums and the partner chats. Uh, and of course, uh, don't forget to post your questions in the chat. Uh, we will do our best to answer the most interesting ones. Uh, so today we are discussing uh, the connectivity for IoT. Uh, no matter what hardware or software you use, uh, you need uh, a right connectivity provider. Uh, the connectivity serves as this magic glue that helps us to uh, put the projects together and actually makes the Internet of Things possible. So we should, of course, consider uh, the reputation of this and that provider. We should consider uh, the experience, uh, the uh, reliability of the solution. We might consider also the language technical support speaks and how fast our provider responds to our queries. Of course, we should consider the commercials. However, the very first question we should ask ourselves is, what technology should I choose for this and that customer in order to serve him better and to answer his request efficiently. So uh, today I'm fortunate to have with me the experts that will help me to answer this question. Uh, my guests uh, come from different uh, sides of connectivity specter, satellite, global IOC SIMs, uh, and routers for telematics. So please allow me to present you Konstantin Kalupayev, Associate Director for Project Ceridium, uh, I, would I would like to present you also Domantas Balnis. Uh, he's our operational marketing project manager at Teltonica Networks. Uh, and also Martin Whitlock, uh, the C CTO at Telenor Connection. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, each of you uh, has uh, quite a unique view on connectivity, unique take, and I would really appreciate if you could say a few words about uh, the uniqueness of the technology you provide and uh, how it could be implemented uh, in telematics, what could be the real cases of implementation. So, Konstantin, uh, you represent Radium Satellite Connectivity. I would really appreciate if you could open our discussion today. Okay, so I start sending my presentation, yes? Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, hope you're staying safe and, uh, and your relatives staying safe and healthy in uh, these harsh times. Uh, staying at home as myself. Special thanks to Gurdan team for inviting our company to participate in uh, these events. Hopefully I can bring some interesting items for the discussion. My name is Konstantin. And I work for Iridium. Iridium is a long time uh, leader in the satellites uh, connectivity for IoT applications. And that's why we're feeling ourselves uh, in position to loud and talk about our experience along with the other invited uh, experts. So talking about uh, connectivity in general, uh, we will, you will assume 
the terrestrial connectivity networks such as uh, GSM networks. This is something everyone already got used to, even myself. But uh, terrestrial networks uh, cover only a limited amount of uh, Earth's surface, and uh, it's like 15 to 20 percent, according to different researches. And uh, of course, it will grow a bit uh, in single digits uh, due to uh, economic expansion, but still, there is no clue to construct something in the areas where there are no users that will pay for this construction. So, in the on contrary, IoT is uh, concerned about getting your crucial information, getting your data, whenever you are, wherever you are, and uh, transferring this information to make a necessary decision on time and react for incidents and etc. So. Uh, when we're talking about satellite connectivity, it allows you to cover that gap in uh, the connectivity, in terrestrial connectivity networks that may happen. And uh, Iridium, for example, is a uh, uh, network that is uh, covering 100% of uh, Earth's surface from pole to pole. So we are well positioned to serve you whatever your asset is. So getting back to the real world application, and uh, I believe that the majority of maybe a uh, big amount of uh, good amount active uh, uh, transport applications uh, use a GSM network and uh, uh, on the same time it may easily happen that uh, your valuable assets either it is uh, cold chain uh, transportation uh, of black caviar or maybe your tra the transport is carrying nuclear waste so you rely on the terrestrial network but when it's uh, happening that uh, you don't have the cellular coverage and you have two choices, either to sweat and wait uh, to, uh, for your transfer to move back to the terrestrial network and nothing happens to it, or you're assured and uh, well safe just installing the small satellite module uh, additionally to your uh, existing classic uh, terrestrial network dispatch. And uh, it is... Uh, uh, we, we are not talking of uh, satellites uh, totally um, exchanging the terrestrial network because, because uh, typical uh, patterns of usage of, um, and transferring of uh, data will be quite expensive uh, using satellites. But uh, for example, you're combining a uh, Telenor network uh, and you're using uh, Iridium satellite uh, coverage uh, all combined into the Siltonic uh, terminal and uh, you get yourself uh, feeling well about your assets uh, being able to be found in uh, any situation and uh, getting crucial information at any time. So, of course, in many countries, especially developing like uh, Russia, for instance, uh, you will go and say, okay, nothing will happen. But when developing countries will be developing, they will start using satellites for their assets. Uh, but there is the chance that uh, your uh, asset won't be ever facing the situation when they are in the terrestrial network and uh, a lot of uh, heavy equipment manufacturers like Caterpillar or Komatsu already facing this uh, issue when their uh, asset fleet that is a million dollar worth is uh, out of the coverage and uh, for months and rarely being uh, able to get the GSM coverage. So the corporate standard for such solution became the using of the satellite network. The current slide represents the uh, fleets that are using Iridium is uh, the basis to transfer information about the location of the heavy equipment, uh, its uh, uh, engine hours, uh, information about uh, required maintenance, uh, and etc. and etc. cetera. Um, it may be funny, but I heard a situation when uh, uh, the heavy dredging machine was uh, today on near to Khabarovsk and uh, to, tomorrow morning they, it was found 100 kilometers inside uh, the China. So <laughs> I, I hope it is uh, just a joke, but reality says that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's our life. So uh, a lot of such assets that never face uh, the terrestrial network like uh, uh, distant exploration, some uh, distant oil well, stationary objects, uh, environmental and uh, fish buoys will never ever get uh, into a situation when it's uh, facing uh, GSM network. And that's why you use the satellite. Another example that I want to touch is uh, 
another classic example of uh, transport monitoring this is fuel uh, monitoring and uh, typically it consumes uh, megabytes of data but uh, uh, when you use uh, some specific uh, approach when you uh, try to check your uh, fuel consumption uh, uh, inter interaction wise and you just use RFE ID readers and cars and uh, classical trackers uh, with the uh, fuel sensors you will be able to construct a system where uh, you are monitoring uh, fuel in uh, Chukotka above the polar cycle and 600 kilometers away from the nearest uh, city and uh, always being said that uh, satellite might be expensive but even uh, though here we can see the situation that in six months you have a payback period when uh, everything constructed and uh, arranged properly so by the way this uh, case you can find on the good time com on the blog uh, and uh, Fortunately, uh, moderators limited my time because uh, I can speak uh, for quite a while for all these Iridium uh, cases. But uh, the last one is uh, a kind of connection between corporate social responsibility and the most uh, and the fast uh, developing uh, industry of UAVs and drones. So distant healthcare is more and more important, especially in pandemic times. And uh, that's why I've taken this uh, particular uh, case to show that uh, the UAVs itself needs control, needs uh, to monitor of its location, as well as the parcels they deliver. So here is the good example of how Iridium uh, partner uh, equip the UAVs and help uh, uh, people in the distant areas of the world getting uh, distant medication. So I hope for this uh, uh, speedy presentation I was able to explain why the satellite to touch why the satellite is a crucial for particular IT cases and why iridium counts of uh, IoT satellite IoT subscriber is approaching 1 million subscribers mm -hmm. so thanks a lot Constantine mm -hmm. thank you so much for your presentation and for the real cases uh, and uh, it's also great that you managed to highlight how different uh, solutions and different connectivity providers and uh, hardware providers can be fusioned into one uh, when you talked about the, the very first user case. Um, uh, we don't have any questions in the chat so far. However, I have a question to you. Uh, could you please highlight uh, what is the difference between Iridium and other satellite pro pro connectivity providers? Because not all the providers are the same. So maybe a few words uh, about uh, low Earth uh, orbit uh, satellites. So what's there? Yeah, th this is the subject I can uh, talk for quite a while as well. Uh, uh, low Earth orbit allows uh, our applications to be small low energy consumption and uh, low profile antenna devices so it's quite small because you have only 700 kilometers that uh, uh, is the distance between the satellite and yourself uh, in opposite to geo stationary orbit which is uh, 60 36 uh, thousand kilometers above you so another uh, feature of low earth orbit is that uh, Iridium especially is a pole to pole orbit that allows you to track your assets uh, in any point of course, even though it's uh, uh, below or above uh, any hills or it's in a tree forest or whatever. In each 10 minutes, you will see the satellite that will uh, fly above you and connect uh, all necessary data you want to transfer. So it's uh, L band uh, frequency also allows you not to worry about any um, weather issues. So, so we can say that Iridium and Low Earth Orbit is uh, pretty much uh, constructed to serve IoT markets. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for your answer, Constantine. Uh, please uh, allow me to remind our audience that um, uh, we welcome the questions in the chat. Please feel free to join our discussion to share your experience with connectivity and tell us what uh, technology you uh, have chosen for your business. Uh, so meantime, uh, please allow me to pass the virtual microphone to Domantas. So would you please be next and say, say a few yes, words of course. about your solution? 
Okay, so hello to everyone again. Uh, I said Xenia, I'm Domantas Bulnis, Operational Marketing Project Manager. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Gurtam for this fantastic opportunity to share more about Altonica Networks at this tremendous event. And thanks to all participants who found time and uh, found time to learn something new. So let's start. Uh, so Teltonica has five different divisions. I believe that most of you know Teltonica exactly from vehicle telematics, but with other departments where we are also proud of them. Uh, if vehicle telematics is currently top three global manufacturer of fleet management products, uh, Teltonica Networks is one of the five biggest global providers of industrial cellular IoT products by Birkinside. And I believe that other departments like Smart Autonomous Solutions or Telematic will become top global providers quickly. So, uh, how is said by Birkinside, we are top seller routers providers because we are growing rapidly and every year we are increasing by selling devices at least a couple of times. And the reason for that is our reliable products helping, helping us to open new markets and solutions for our customers. Of course, GSM connectivity is available almost, like uh, my colleague said before, almost around the globe. Uh, and prices for these services are not so big, so clients are choosing uh, to combine, yes, like Senia said, uh, use those magic glue to combine network and hardware to the full solution. So let's take a look at our portfolio. It consists of modems, gateways, routers, and newest family members, switches. And of course, we have IoT platforms. Our core products are based on cellular connectivity technologies such as 4G, 3G, narrowband, IoT, LTE, CATAM1, and others. So our products and we focus on three key areas. Our products are designed to be reliable with expected life cycle of at least five years. Device architecture is resistant to cybersecurity threats and they are developed to be easy to use for everyone with no special training. They are plug and play devices. So today we'll present for you three use cases in the transportation segment those use cases have some in common problems. So when we're talking about the transportation industry, we are thinking just about the movement, yes? So we cannot rely on standard solutions and we must think outside the box. Security and reliability of our router cannot become a bottleneck of the whole solution. More devices you will connect to the one router, more speed you need to get to the full, full connected devices with required internet speed. And of course, how it's essential to do not have downtime in business, because you are not just lose business that minute, yes, when you don't have connectivity, but also your clients will lose confidence about you like a reliable partner and restore that trust, we need time. And time, how we know, is money. So this first use case, uh, I can tell everyone is one of the most popular amongst our partners. Our clients with this device won many, many projects. For example, in Spain, Valencia City, they have 240 similar buses with this kind of a solution. The same situation is in Lithuania. Bus company Kotra uses our Route 955 in all of their buses. And one interesting fact, one Italy city bought buses from Turkey company and demand them to install Teltonica routers in those buses. So you can understand that Route 955 plays vital role in this business segment. First of all, uh, our clients connecting CCTV cameras. Those cameras are for security measures, but more importantly, if bus has CCTV camera with live footage, then insurance companies uh, giving a better offer for transportation companies and they can save a lot of money. Also, they are connecting digital signage screens. They can rent a space on the bus for commercials and bus, com com bus companies can make additional money. Uh, ticketing terminal and payment system we cannot imagine in this digital world. So we no need to buy a ticket in the booth. Uh, we no need to have a cash. We just need to have a bank card and buy a ticket on the bus. Also, in the topology, you can see the panic button. This case is not so famous in Europe, but in Brazil, the client asked for that mandatory. You know, 
uh, thieves in Brazil, they are trying to hijack or steal money from the drivers. Uh, but the driver presses the panic button and send a command to our router to send an email or SMS to the police station with coordinates from route 955 because this device has GNSS capabilities. So, of course, our clients can customize their alerts notifications how they want to react as fast as possible. Let's take a look at use case which are ideal for our newest uh, product member, Rootix 12. So due to travel restrictions, internal tourism is booming and we see an increased demand for seller solutions with the marine sector. All sailors use the internet a lot, uh, not only before the trip, but mostly while they are on it. Uh, they check weather forecasts, plan for their voyages with specific tools on the internet. In some cases, internet connectivity can save lives or a lot of inconveniences. So router with T mobile models, which can provide robust connectivity, is a must for boat or yacht owners as they are sailing further from the shores. Where to get the signal is crucial. So uh, the tourism sector is using connecting technologies to increase their marketing reach and connect with customers. Many are offering passenger Wi-Fi on the boats and yachts. Also, internet services is used for content streaming and remote CCTV feeds. And the last uh, use case I'm really, really proud of. So not one, but two Rootix 11 4G LTE CAT6 routers are used in this interconnected to be able to switch between four mobile operators. In this solution, the cellular routers are vital by providing secure and reliable communication to the headquarters of the mission control. Uh, they provide connectivity to these onboard systems and devices in the vehicle voice over AP, uh, fax connectivity, CCTV cameras, drone connectivity, and real-time live tracking of rescue or statistic critical map server. This use case we created together with Red Cross from Germany. The Rootix 11 has met the high security requirements of the Red Cross organization. This rock industrial router can provide fast and reliable connectivity with bandwidth up to 300 megabits per second. Besides, with two SIM card slots in each device, this solution can leverage the connectivity out of four different operators. Dual Wi-Fi allows connecting multiple devices like PDA and drones, while our RMS system allows to set up devices easily and to reach critical hardware behind the router remotely. In other words, this solution represents a hospital on wheels. And all of this will be not impossible if not our device with reliable and secure connectivity. So which devices to pick from transportation industry? It depends what do you want to connect and achieve. You can see three devices with eMark certificate, Route 240, Route 955, and Route X11. Of course, other devices also can be used in this industry because sometimes clients don't need a certificate. But if you see potential in some of our products and you will need that eMark certificate, you can approach our key accounts and we will try to find the ways how to help your business. So why Teltonica? Because possibility to make alerts and get notification via SMS or email, so you will be always on the line. You can connect up to 100 Wi-Fi users at a time, or you even create a captive portal. So all in all combines connectivity and location services in the full solution. So thank you very much for this um, chance to give more about Altonica. Maybe have a questions. Thank you so much, Domantas. Thank you for your presentation, for the cases that you showed us. Uh, for those of you who just joined uh, our meetups, we are talking today about the connectivity in IoT, uh, which solutions uh, should be chosen for this and that uh, user case. Uh, so please feel free to ask your questions in the chat. Please feel free to share your experience uh, with the connectivity uh, and uh, tell us what you think. Uh, so we, oh, I see questions in the chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, David is asking uh, whether uh, the slides will be available for the download. Uh, yes, we will have the presentations um, uploaded to our website and of course uh, you will be able to look through again uh, the recording of this meetup uh, afterwards. Um, uh, 
And also, Antonio is asking you, Domantas, uh, uh, does, uh, do your devices work uh, in uh, uh, NB IoT network? Yes, it works. We have devices like the uh, TRB255 and TRM250. They supporting narrowband uh, IoT uh, network. Mm -hmm. So that that's great, um, dear uh, dear watchers. Uh, if you would like to know more about uh, the providers, about the, the experts that joined us today, of course, uh, please feel free to visit the website uh, of. Uh, Iridium of Teltonica Networks of uh, Telenor Connection, uh, you will find uh, more information about their products there. Um, <laughs> and Antonio, don't, don't want to let you go, Domantas. Uh, okay, asks, very good. Uh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, uh, he would like to know whether Teltonica have uh, projects uh, where uh, you use trackers with Iridium channels. Uh, if yes, could you please tell us uh, little, uh, a, a bit more about these projects? Uh, first of all, uh, I'm from Teltonica Network, so we are working with uh, networking devices. I believe that uh, my colleague can, could answer this question more properly, but uh, I heard one uh, use case where clients are trying to use our router with a radium network like a backup so if gsm is not working then they trying to connect the radium and they providing backup connectivity they want us thank you so much for, for answering the questions uh, from the audience uh dear, viewer, dear viewers please feel free to uh leave your questions to us we will do our best to answer everything so last but not the least martin I'm passing the virtual microphone to you, so please provide us the insights about the global IoT themes and uh, how it could be applied efficiently. Very well, thank you for that. And uh, so, my name is uh, Martin Wicklock, and I'm the CTO of Telenor Connection. And um, I must admit, before I introduce myself for my presentation even more, I had a bad taste to uh, include a presentation that had an animation in it, and I realize now that the text that should be on top of the animation disappeared. But luckily, our solutions work better in life uh, than uh, in PowerPoint. So uh, I hope you can have uh, oversight of that. But anyway, I'm the CTO uh, of uh, Telenor Connection. And we uh, provide uh, global connectivity using cellular. Um, and what you do see here is uh, a world map. And the little blue dots uh, represent uh, sites where we connect uh, things over a 48-hour period. So uh, while we cannot uh, brag about uh, really global um, connectivity like uh, Iridium, um, we uh, do uh, have a, a possibility to deliver cellular services uh, everywhere in the world, basically. And I think uh, it's been mentioned uh, already by the previous uh, speakers as well that cellular as such is um, of course, a, a very good choice uh, in, in many IoT applications, at least as long as you uh, intend to stick within the, the traditional coverage areas where cellular is dominant. Um, and um, within connection, then, we, we of course see a different type of connectivity choices also using cellular. We have uh, connectivity networks like 2G, which still represents the bulk of connected devices over cellular. I think that out of, uh, we have more than 10 million SIM cards and we, we still have the majority of those SIM cards connected over 2G. That's because it's been around for a long time and cellular connectivity um, or IoT devices in general, I would say, uh, typically have a very long lifetime. So this means that uh, over time, of course, uh, cellular industry and IoT industry is shifting slowly towards the newer technologies like uh, 4G, of course, but also LTM and narrowband IT, which has been mentioned earlier in these presentations as well, uh, is now being launched in different places of the world. And uh, obviously, uh, the mobile operators uh, will then gradually also try to shift uh, usage from the legacy technologies into the new ones. But that said, uh, I'm pretty confident that in many markets, um, 2G will still be around for a very long time, partly driven by things like 
the e-call emergency call service in the automotive industry, for instance, that was quite recently standardized in and um, as a mandatory requirement for new cars in, in Europe, uh, which is a service that is still uh, designed to be used on top of 2G. So we will have those networks around. But um, anyway, we, we are definitely here to help guiding right in the, in the selection of which cellular technology is uh, the best one for each and every application. And speaking about applications, I think that all IoT solutions, they start off with trying to provide some customer benefits, creating value. Uh, and there are obviously some different uh, types of value that can be created uh, by an IT application. and Some even have multiple values. But uh, looking at customer experience and improving that is one thing. I, I think that one anecdote is what you see on the picture here, uh, this Volvo car. And this is a typical picture of how it could look like in, a, in Sweden a December day or so where the weather is cold and, and when you get out to the parking lot, what you see here is a Volvo, which has made a Volvo on-call service connected to it, so that it can turn on the, the heater remotely uh, before you get there. And obviously, I think that we all would try, we would choose the warm and cozy car to get step into if we can. So that's, that's really about creating value. And I think even if uh, we are here today to sh talk about choosing the right technology for IoT, I would also take the moment to um, promote starting to focus on the actual value that you intend to create with your application. Because if you have that sorted out clearly, I think that it will be much easier also to choose the right technology. So linking back to um, what has been said by Constantine and so on, if you know that you're going to deploy sensors in for an agriculture solution or something deep into uh, uh, a place where where there is no cellular of course you should uh, look at uh, a satellite uh, solution um, but if you want to shuffle big amounts of data uh, and you want to have a, a broadband mobile broadband like solution uh, maybe for a digital signage use case then uh, maybe cellular is the better choice so i think there is a palette of technology to choose from, and that's, that's of course, very good for those who want to design an IT solution. Uh, but talking about that, if you are an enterprise and you want to uh, start to design your solution, I think there are a number of different challenges that many manufacturers or OEMs are, are uh, post about. And first of all, one is, is competence. I think that if you want to design an end-to-end -end IT solution today, uh, you require quite a lot of competence. Anything from selecting the right technology uh, in the com communication part, uh, integrating communication hardware, um, like the Teltonica modems. Um, you probably need to have some kind of cloud environment where you can bring your data and, and interact with other systems and create the value that we want to, to in the end. And here, I think it's uh, my recommendation to um, really try to find the right partners, those that can come in with competence within the respective fields. And I, I think we have at least three of those represented here today, uh, or four actually, uh, with the host as well, didn't forget. Uh, and uh, yeah, turn to those and let those uh, players uh, support you in your journey. So um, that is a very, very important part of it, because we all benefit from IT once the solutions actually start to scale. Um, I think we can all agree on that. Uh, then, of course, you want to, to design your solutions in a way that you have a predictable cost uh, and you know how, how it will actually scale. And um, here I also think that, it, as I mentioned, I mean, it's, it's important to, to have a, a vision and a, an understanding of what kind of services you want to supply so that you have a little bit of understanding of your behavior and where you want to go. Um, what kind of solutions does that have to be there? Is it just about sending those bits and bytes that um, you can um, understand this part of your solution from the start? Or do you have a requirement to make firmware upgrades over the air over time, uh, which might put other requirements? And I think just as a reflection in our own industry in the cellular world, we have uh, yeah, the choice of narrowband IT, which was mentioned also in one of the questions, which is, uh, probably a very good selection if you want to do a specific thing, but 
maybe not the best choice if you want to at some point in time make a firmware upgrade campaign to a large number of devices that are spread out over over the globe because then you might need a little bit more bandwidth for for instance and in in this space where we have a lot of concerns regarding security and other things i think uh, a lot of of um, enterprises and OEMs should consider the possibility to do upgrades because if we have a long life long lived uh, IT application it's uh, likely that there will be new threats posed in the future which would uh, benefit from uh, being able to, to push out new firmware, for instance, to the devices. But what we as a cellular player, of course, need to support with here is to help to understand together with our customers, the application and tailor a packaging of our solutions in a way that makes it predictable to see if, if cost is the most important driver uh, then maybe we, we can help out them to select the, uh, the low-cost alternatives uh, on each market and tailor a, a, a roaming um, profile that, that utilizes those. Uh, or if uh, quality of service is of most importance, we of course can create a, a roaming profile that includes our 400 plus operators, all of them globally, to make sure that there's always one operator that has uh, the best coverage in that site. This is something that that we work with, of course, as a dedicated IoT player within the Telenor group, um, and uh, something that may differ a little bit from how a, um, a local operator um, can provide services. They, they are usually bound to their own network only. Uh, and speaking about global, uh, I think in the last bullet here, the business model, um, we, uh, we see that a lot of enterprises that launch IT services also struggle when it comes to defining their new business model. And it's, this could be a lot of different things. It could be anything from transforming a legacy uh, business model, which could be just selling products through distributed networks, into digitizing your business and selling a service instead um, and transforming that entirely. But the, the common thing about our customer base, and I will come back a little bit to that later, but our customers are typically enterprises that, that need to deploy their solution globally. That's why we call our service a global SIM, uh, or at least there are multiple markets that are relevant. Um, and here, the business model of the connectivity must follow the business model of your, your products and services. So. Um, if you, for instance, start off with a minimal viable product, which many people do, many enterprises do these days, and I think that's a good concept. But maybe you build a solution that works well, but locally. Um, and once you realize that you, this is a good solution and you want to scale that, uh, you're suddenly faced with the challenge of monitoring or operating with your SIM cards and, and cellular devices on many, many markets at the same time. So here, of course, we, uh, we see that there are dedicated IoT uh, cellular providers like ourselves uh, who uh, focus on, on providing this as a service to our customer. And we take care of the global uh, connectivity in a way that scales well with our customers' business so that they can focus on what is most important to them. And that is probably not uh, keeping track of the, on the connectivity. Uh, I was, I was asked to discuss a little bit about use cases and uh, I've chosen deliberately to take uh, two use cases, but different use cases coming from the automotive sector, which is one of the sectors we serve. And I think uh, we have uh, customers in basically all verticals uh, that we can talk about when it comes to IT, but automotive is interesting because they have always uh, pushed and been pushed the industry forward and been quite innovative, I think in delivering new services. Uh, the first use case is maybe not the one that uh, drives the most number of SIM cards in our portfolio, but it's an interesting one anyway. It's Koenigsegg super sports cars. Um, they don't produce many cars a year, but each car they produce is, uh, is uh, something extra. And what Koenigsegg do then um, with the connectivity is to complement their super sports car with an experience to the driver and the owner. 
something that goes beyond uh, the typical driving. So if you have a Koenigsegg, you're probably interested into racing and, and you want to get statistics and data about everything from lap times to g-force uh, that you were experiencing in the, that curve somewhere and uh, maybe being able to compare that with the next round you drive on the on the same track for instance so from a customer benefit perspective this gives access to a lot of statistics of the vehicle um, you can optimize the performance both of your car and yourself as a driver over time and uh, i think it, it's a nice nice add-on to, to the experience of the car. Koenigsegg also have benefits of their own. If you produce super sport cars, you want to be able to optimize those at all times. And with the connected cars that they have, they get information from all cars at all times um, so that you don't have to rely upon your own test track and your test cars. You actually gather statistics from all your drivers over the world. And here also, of course, the global SIM cards come in play because Koenigsegg must make sure that when they sell a car on any market, they get the same type of uh, information brought back to them. Looking at uh, another automotive related use case then, uh, Scania. Uh, they don't produce super sports car, but they produce a lot of, of heavy trucks. And um, the reason I, I brought Scania to the case here as well is that that's one of the pioneers, I would say, within cellular connectivity and, and IoT. And we've been working with them since the late 90s um, in, in connecting those car, trucks uh, over the world. And looking at their journey, I think it's interesting because they, they started off with a leap of faith when they said that, yeah, we, we don't know exactly why, but we think that we need to connect all our cars that we sell. And they did that a number of years ago and, and took the, the cost and investment of it. And I think what they do now as benefit, what they reap as benefits today is that they have full visibility of, of uh, their installed fleet. Um, and uh, they can use that information, of course, to internally, uh, they can utilize this data for technical devel development uh, to optimize the trucks. Um, they know how to optimize uh, service intervals and, and other things that comes with it. And uh, also the, the usage patterns that are being um, generated by the drivers. From customer perspective, I think this is also interesting because originally uh, it wasn't the, the truck driver or the, even the, the fleet customers they have that were, were the users of this data, but gradually that has become a more and more important part of the offering that Scania has. And um, I know that from the journey has been that first it was a good uh, add-on to the truck to be able to also offer digital services. But nowadays it's a mandatory requirement. And in some cases, if Scania wouldn't be able to deliver digitized services around the cars, they wouldn't be able to sell them. So that is anything from having uh, applications that optimize the, the way the drivers uh, drive uh, to reduce fuel cost, which is a huge part of the total cost of ownership for the, the fleet companies, uh, into geofencing the trucks uh, for different purposes and, uh, and all these things. And here, of course, the integration from Scania into uh, our deliverable as, as the connectivity provider is uh, integral because Scania has uh, a million connected devices out there all over the place and they need to be able to hand, handle that in a managed way with API calls that can extract information and also set new uh, settings, uh, push that out to the trucks in real time and so on and so on. So uh, the, the, the connectivity platform that we provide there is uh, is of course of, of great great importance. So with that, I think my time's up, and I will uh, open up for questions. Martin, thank you so much for your presentation, and also for following the timing. Here, you're better than me, as I can see. Um, so we don't have any questions in the chat. However, I already see some synergy, uh, and uh, Alexei was already hooked up by the presentation done by Iridium, by Constantine. So that's great. Um, 
so uh, as far as we can see, based on these user cases, based on these um, uh, different technologies, the market really offers us uh, a lot of ways we can assist our customers. Uh, and we uh, already uh, witnessed some different generations of uh, mobile connectivity and of cellular, cellular connectivity. Uh, and uh, Martin, uh, do you, uh, from your perspective, from Telenor Connection perspective, uh, how do you think uh, will uh, the current crisis, current pandemic, slow down the implementation of 5G we are all expecting? That's a very, very interesting question, actually. I think that uh, to some extent, short term, uh, there may be some effects, uh, as with any other industry. I mean, to roll out 5G requires, first of all, site visits. It requires that the factories that produce the equipment is uh, up and running and that the logistics is working as expected. But I think also if you, if you lift your um, eyes a little bit and look a little bit more f in the future, um, they, there are all reasons to believe that it will actually expedite the deployment of 5G and I would say digitization in general because something that a lot of players have learned during this tough time with COVID-19 is that in the future, we might not be able to rely upon traveling uh, as we have been seen. And, and even in the case we need travel, it's going to be more expensive, most likely, because uh, the, the yeah, airplane industry or, or um, yeah, it's changing and, and there's a lot of challenges to that. So uh, with that, I think that a lot of companies right now are considering how they can use digitized solutions to a greater extent to uh, yeah, bridge that, those challenges that we have experienced now. Thank you so much. Uh, also, we have a question uh, from Pedro in the chat. Uh, Pedro would like to know, um, how will this big IoT investments affect uh, small companies? Does Kanye connecting the trucks will affect telematics business from your perspective? So, uh, yeah, okay, if I, if I understand the, the question right, how uh, investments from from the the big uh, dragon so to say will affect uh, the small companies i i'm not sure that uh, it's if i understood the question right i think that it's also so that a lot of big companies uh, try to understand what will happen to their business when there are new entrants coming in uh, maybe challenging their own uh, legacy business model so i think all companies actually are in one way or another um, forced to invest or innovate in one way they, in the ways they can uh, to uh, to face the new realities that come now given that digitization is uh, very much upon us i hope i understood the question right and missed it, but, um, yes yes martin you did so Pe pedro confirmed in the chat so yeah thank good. you for answering uh, so dear speakers Thank you so much for uh, your presentations, for uh, the expertise that uh, you shared with us today. So as far as we can see, um, uh, there are a lot of technologies out there available on the market. Uh, and our uh, viewers, our uh, integrators of uh, IoT solution, they have quite a wide choice. Uh, so uh, now they have much more flexibility uh, and now they are not obliged to rely on a, on a classical, traditional local mobile operator. Uh, they they don't, don't have to care that much about roaming when they have uh, the global IoT uh, SIM providers like Telenor Connection present there. So we, um, we as integrators, we uh, even don't always need to think how to replace uh, the physical SIM card uh, in the in our devices uh, because we have uh, eSIMs that support different um, connectivity profiles. So I even if the cellular uh, connectivity doesn't answer our needs, uh, we can go to satellite uh, when uh, the uh, the cost uh, of the uh, the connectivity uh, failure is too big, whether it be in, in terms of uh, goods stolen uh, or even in terms of human lives like Konstantin showed us in one of his user cases when uh, 
um, the, we should monitor the vaccines delivered. Uh, and uh, even um, uh, even that is it's not the, the full list, uh, and we have also low power connectivity when we for the projects where we have to focus on uh, the long battery life. Uh, and even that, it's it's not the end because we have uh, our uh, industrial routers like uh, Domitus from Teltonica Network showed us today. So when we need a huge uh, amounts of data to be parsed, when we need to uh, to browse video uh, or other med media files, it's possible with uh, routers. So uh, at, in the end, uh, how the, uh, the the user cases show us, uh, in the end, it's up to the integrator to determine what is the need of the customer and how uh, we can answer it. Uh, in the end, uh, it's uh, the integrator that, uh, the solution provider that should stay up to date, that should uh, uh, grasp all the experience that he can from the user cases he does and from the user cases his, his competitors do. Uh, and it's up to integrator to listen the customer's need and to apply all the wit that he has in order to find the best, the optimal solution. So here at Gurtam, we really like to celebrate this wit, this expertise in telematics. And that's why not so long ago we launched uh, the IoT Project of the Year Award. So this competition is uh, truly global. Uh, you don't have to be uh, a VLON partner. You don't have to use uh, software solutions provided by Gritter. Uh It's enough to have the expertise in telematics and uh, to be able to present a user case with any hardware, software, or connectivity uh, to uh, show uh, the community uh, how the, the need of the customer was solved and where, where your expertise shines the brightest. So uh, dear uh, viewers, dear audience, please don't forget to apply. You still have the time until the end of July. Um, the details of the competition, uh, you can find it on our website. You can find it uh, in the links that you can find below this video of course, uh, and we, uh, our jury will be uh, happy to uh, examine uh, your, uh, your user cases and of course reward the smartest, uh, the most uh, experienced, uh, the, the wittest integrator. Uh, so dear viewers, thank you for joining us today. Dear experts, thank you for sharing our expertise. Thank you for, uh, for sharing user cases. Uh, please uh, let me remind you that uh, this meetup will be available, will be recorded, uh, and you can find below all our, our schedule and all the previous meetups. So please stay tuned and, of course, stay safe. <laughs>